Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This motion addressing the importance of vaccinating our children is intended to bring clarity to the confusion now undermining the science behind life-saving immunization. The vast majority of Canadian children, about 95 percent of them, are protected by vaccinations by the time they enter school at age five. Their parents recognize the proven science which underscores the medical evidence that immunization works. It not only protects children from disease, but also those around them. But in recent years, we have seen a troubling new trend. With families opting out of vaccinations here in Ontario, those children are not only at risk of harmful and sometimes deadly diseases, but they are putting other children at risk at school and in the community. There are children who are not able to participate in our immunization program due to medical reasons, and it's our responsibility as parents to ensure that we are protecting these children by vaccinating our own children. Mr. Speaker, in our province for over a century, dedicated researchers and healthcare professionals have worked tirelessly to reduce and eliminate a long list of infectious diseases, which at one time ravaged our population. Cholera, smallpox, tuberculosis, diphtheria, typhus, polio, tetanus, whooping cough, rubella, meningitis, and measles. If you ask your grandparents or your great-grandparents if they're still alive, they'll tell you what it was like when there was an outbreak of one of these debilitating diseases in their community. Polio, for example, left many children paralyzed. At its height in 1953, polio caused about 500 deaths in Canada while disabling thousands more. But two years later, when a polio vaccine was introduced, the incident rate dropped dramatically. By the mid-1990s, Canada and all of the Americas were certified as polio-free, and today around the globe, polio has been virtually eliminated. Another contagious disease that has afflicted millions of people around the planet is measles. Also known as rubella or red measles, this disease is a highly contagious virus. Symptoms of measles include fever, cough, and a blotchy rash. It's easily spread from person to person through direct contact or through the air from sneezing or coughing. A severe case can bring on brain swelling, pneumonia, and hearing loss. The World Health Organization has stated that measles is the leading global cause of vaccine-preventable deaths in children under five. Now, before a vaccine was introduced in Canada in the early 1960s, we averaged about 400,000 cases of measles every year. By the mid-1990s, that number had dropped dramatically to just over 2,000. Immunization is truly one of the most significant advancements in public health in this country and has saved more lives than any other health measure. So, considering the benefits to the health and well-being of all Canadians, why do we now see the emergence of skepticism questioning the efficacy of immunization? We've heard the fear-mongering expressed by those who are opposed to vaccinations. Some claim that the vaccines contain dangerous chemicals. Others believe that they can combat potentially deadly diseases using so-called alternative treatments. Now, if you enter anti-vaccination on an internet search, you will find the wild west of fear-mongering and conspiracy theories. There are those who suggest that there's a link between immunization and autism. Celebrities Jenny McCarthy and Alicia Silverstone, preaching from a wide-reaching soapbox, have fueled this debate. Anti-vaxxers point to a 1998 study that suggested a possible link between the MMR vaccine, and that stands for measles, mumps, and rubella, and autism. The study, which appeared in the medical journal The Lancet, set off a firestorm of controversy, but was later debunked as being fraudulent and misleading. In fact, 10 of the 13 authors of that paper later said that they should not have published it. The Lancet even discredited claim that the MMR vaccine is linked to autism spectrum disorder. But the damage was done. There are parents today who honestly believe they're making the right choice for their parents by saying no to vaccinations. 
Sadly, they are putting their children and others at great risk. We saw this recently as measles flared up in parts of Ontario. The first cases appeared in Toronto and were soon followed by several reported cases in the Niagara area. Starting on February 2nd of this year, there were four confirmed cases of measles in Toronto, and that number across Canada surged to 137. There were a total of nine cases in Toronto, six in the Niagara region, and one both in Peel and in Halton regions. But the worst hit region was the Lanaudiere area of Quebec, where there were 119 confirmed cases of measles, and that truly is a troubling figure. Mr. Speaker, coming into contact with this virus can be devastating, not only for those who contract the virus, but also for everyone in the household and those who come into contact with them. A troubling example of this is the case of a young family in York Region. A mother of two small children was called by York Region Public Health on February the 9th after visiting her doctor's office in Markham. She was told that a patient who had visited the same office had been diagnosed with measles. Now her baby, not old enough to be vaccinated, and her toddler only having received one dose of the two-dose vaccine, were forced to stay at home for the 21-day incubation period. These vaccine-preventable diseases are incredibly contagious and especially dangerous as many do not show signs or symptoms of infection for anywhere between 7 to 21 days. Now, it's for this reason that we do need to protect the most vulnerable who are unable to protect themselves, especially where these diseases are being spread by unsuspecting carriers in public places. Mr. Speaker, in Ontario, we do have a very strict protocol for the vaccination of children. Legally, if you attend school in this province, you must be vaccinated. The Immunization of School Pupils Act, the ISPA, requires that parents of children attending primary or secondary school provide their local medical officer of health with proof that their child had their immunization against the designated diseases. But exemptions are allowed on the basis of a parent's religious or philosophical beliefs. Only about 2% of Ontario students, on average, are opting for this exemption. Immunization authorities do tell us that an estimated 95% of vaccine coverage is needed to stop the spread of a virus. This is referred to as herd immunity. It is true that for not just measles, but for all vaccine-preventable illnesses. So, Mr. Speaker, some parents may think that their kids are safe from these illnesses because their classmates are vaccinated. But if too many parents are of this mindset, we're going to see lower vaccination rates in our classrooms, putting all students at risk, putting younger siblings at risk, and putting the general public at risk when they leave the classroom. Mr. Speaker, you may have heard of the recent outbreak of mumps in the NHL this past winter. Nine players were affected from the New York Rangers, the Minnesota Wild, and the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. They missed up to eight games each. Now, team doctors were quick to act and gave the players booster shots, stopping the spread of the virus. The importance of vaccinating is simply unquestionable. Preventing illness is not only good for our public health. Mr. Speaker, it's also the best option for our public purse. Preventing illnesses with vaccines keeps Ontarians out of emergency rooms and doctor's offices, leaving space open for patients who do need critical care, preventing the spread of the virus and leaving funds available for other important services within our health care system. Mr. Speaker, vaccines have saved more lives in the last 50 years than any other health intervention program in Canada. I'm proud of this government for having such a strong immunization strategy. In Ontario, the provincial government currently funds 22 vaccines, providing protection against 16 different illnesses. Publicly funded vaccines are provided through many different programs. There's the infant and childhood immunizations, school-based immunizations, adult immunizations, the universal influenza immunization program, and high-risk immunization programs. The research is currently underway for new vaccines, and we all need to be concerned about this. Health organizations in Ontario do work very closely with Health Canada studying newly approved vaccines 
always looking for new innovative ways to keep Ontarians healthy and at their very best. Mr. Speaker, you might have heard of the recent good news of the very special gift that Canada has offered to the newly born Princess Charlotte, the latest addition to the royal family. In her name, our federal government is making a charitable donation of $100,000 to Immunize Canada. This is an organization that promotes the safe use of vaccines across our nation. The funds are going to be used to educate the public on the benefits of vaccinating. We know that having access to life-saving vaccines will ensure that children coast to coast will have the best start at life. Mr. Speaker, while I was preparing to present this motion to you today into the House, I was reminded of what I saw on a number of occasions while producing television documentaries from parts of sub-Saharan Africa. I saw mothers and fathers lined up for hours seeking basic health care for their children. I saw young people afflicted with diseases which are easily preventable in this country because of our access to vaccines. Where immunization is offered, those parents that I saw considered themselves to be fortunate to receive this treatment for their children. Mr. Speaker, despite the skepticism and the naysayers, the science is very clear. The history is clear. Immunization saves lives, and we are so fortunate in this province to have fully funded access to vaccinations. So I encourage my colleagues from all sides of the House to support this motion to protect all Ontarians from vaccine-preventable illnesses. Thank you.